You're watching Carver TV. By students, for students. Come in to keep you informed, entertained, and up to date with the latest news. Good morning, Carver Eagles. Welcome back, and thanks for joining CMS TV News. I'm Ramin Maharin. And I'm Christopher McCollum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. to our Carver students who have celebrated their birthdays in August, September, and October. Be sure to get to go to the media center to retrieve your goodie bags. Happy birthday! Christopher McCollum went into the field to cover our rules and guidelines feature. How do you feel about the new rules? Over the summer, Dr. Grace and the school administration came up with new rules and guidelines for students to follow in order to keep Carver safe. Some of the new rules include a new dress code, a flexible morning routine, and Building 5 guidelines. The Carver Way states, Campus safety is our first priority for everyone. Therefore, hoodies are not permitted on campus. Our new dress code also includes no tennis skirts, no ripped in shirts on jeans, and no headwear. This includes hoodies. In order to resume the Keep Carver Clean initiative, students are not allowed to eat anywhere on campus besides the cafeteria. This includes areas like in the halls and in the courtyard. Let's take a quick moment to view our Keep Carver Clean public service announcement.
that one. Stop playing with me. Bro. Don't matter, bro. I'm like that. As long as it went in the trash can. Man, you still trash. You still trash. Alright, alright, no foul. What are you talking about, bro? were broken during the PSA? I counted three. Nope, I saw five. Hoodies? Littering. Back of building five, eating in the halls, and there was a phone out. Oh yeah, you're right! There have been many improvements since the PSA. Stay tuned for our CMS reporter, Gianna Canhoy, with her school changes feature. The back of building five is off limits to all students due to safety issues. No exceptions. There are new guidelines for students to follow in the morning, such as student's choice, Students are allowed to remain in the courtyard, cafeteria, gym, or media center until 9.20. I really enjoy hanging out with my friend during this time. Overall, these new rules are for the good of our school and its students. For CMS TV, I'm Christopher McCollum. And I'm Amin Mahareen. Back, Back to, to the, the studio. studio! Here is Ramin Mahareen's feature on sports. sports. Carver Middle School has many new sports for 2022 to 2023 school year to make this year more fun. Yeah! Lombardi once said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. This year, there are sports like boys baseball, girls softball, boys and girls soccer, boys and girls volleyball, boys basketball, and boys and girls track. For intramural sports, there's code volleyball, code soccer, weight training, drill team, flag football, boys and girls basketball, cheerleading, and boys and girls track. For after school, we have tennis, golf, lacrosse, pickleball, and maybe more. You can find more information about Carver's many new sports by t staying tuned to CMS TV and the morning announcements or by stopping by the gym or front office. Have you noticed there have been some changes around the school? Over the summer, Dr. Rice and her team have been working very hard to make sure Carver is better for you by painting the classroom doors, building one offices, and school exterior. They also pressure wash the floors and walls, and all teachers receive new chairs. Eagles, let's take pride in our campus and make sure we're keeping our school clean by not writing on the walls, doors, and windows. I also clean up any trash we see. I had the pleasure to interview Dr. Grice for more on the topic. We've had a lot of changes this summer, as many of you have noticed. One of the main changes that I want to talk about is our new paint job. If you notice, it used to be red around and it was all peeling and it just didn't look real presentable. So they've actually painted the whole entire outside of the building. In addition, we were able to get the doors, all the classroom doors, all the closet doors painted and we were also able to get the main office painted. So let's go in. So as you can see with our main office, we actually had this whole area painted. We used to have a blue wall here and we just kind of wanted to pick colors that were light, opened it up. We also got some new furniture. So we've had a lot of things done this past summer. We've been hard at work getting ready for you students. Wow, that sounds really expensive. How did you cover all the costs? Well, I didn't personally, I'm just kidding. No, the district actually covers the costs. What I did was I sent them an email. I showed them pictures of the chipped paint, um, the walls, how they looked, and just simply asked them to help us out. I also went to other schools and visited, and I took pictures of their waiting area. I took pictures of their school and basically said, why can't our school look like this? And right away, they started helping out, getting bids, we got painters and we were able to do a lot of the things at the school. So the colors, it was kind of difficult. However, we have so much green around our school. We've got beautiful trees. We've got a lot of grass. So I really wanted the colors to be more earth tone, to bring out the green, to bring out the blue that accents our colors. It took me a minute, but what I would do is get samples, and here and there around the school last year, you guys might not have known it, I was actually painting different parts of the school so that it all, you know, I could see how it looked. 
So that was really kind of the thought process is what would blend in and what would make the grass come out, the trees. Really, I have a lot of plans for the school. Our first plan is I really want to make this an outdoor stage. We planted grass there and now we're just trying to get it green. We're also going to get some trees planted. So our concerts from here on out will be outside. We'll actually put the chairs out here and in the evening it's very pretty out here. The other thing is we're going to get the rest of the hallways painted. If you noticed, Building 2 has a fresh paint job on it. Really opened it up. My goal is that we paint the other buildings, the other three buildings. Um, some of the renovations, I want to get our kitchen renovated so we can use it for after school program for cooking classes. We're going to start a garden in the back where we could possibly grow vegetables that we use for that cooking class. And then just in general upkeep, I'd love to get our gym renovated so that we have new mats and just kind of, you know, bring it up to date. This all sounds really interesting. Would you, is there anything else you'd like to add? The biggest thing is just so that everybody knows how much work we put into this and we all make sure that we respect our surroundings and keep it all clean. That is number one. We've been doing a great job. I've seen students pick up after themselves. I've seen students that actually, you know, remind the other ones to pick up things. We just really need to keep our home, this is our nest, the eagle's nest, clean and protected. So if everybody does their part, it's going to be great. And it's going to be so much for sharing. Well, thank you for doing this. And remember, eagles fly above all. On behalf of the Carver family, I want to acknowledge Ms. Indy and her custodial team for working tirelessly over the summer to make sure our school is beautiful for the first day. For CMS TV, I'm John Canoy, and I'm going to make sure I take care of my school. Make sure you do your part. Following up, reporter Ariana Wagner with new classes. If you could create your dream class, what would it be? This school year, Kyra added many new elective courses. These classes will assist us in broadening our horizon and allowing us to learn in a new way while still having fun. Classes like these will help us understand more and help us grow. Like Dr. Gray said, our mission is to enable students to become positive and productive citizens. These classes are finance, law studies, criminal justice, BAN. They were all added to provide us with different experiences. For CMS TV, I'm Ariana Wagner, and if I had my choice, Cairo would add a drama course alongside the new electives. Back to the studio! Upcoming, we have CMS TV reporter Christopher McCollum and Alyssa Joseph with Media Reopening Story. Who is your favorite author? Carver's Media Center will be reopening soon, with many new items to choose from. Our media specialist, Ms. Goldwire, has included new books, new computers for research, and a space for students to work on school projects, all with a Starbucks theme. The new library rules are, listen to the librarian, ask if you need anything, be respectful to others, read and talk quietly, always walk, never run, return your books to their proper place, your manners are appreciated. We were able to interview Ms. Goldwire. She stated that she wants Carver's Media Center to be the heart of the school, and she wants all students and staff to enjoy and utilize their resources to enhance their learning and teaching experience. For CMS TV, I'm Christopher McCollum. And I'm Ariana Wagner. Ms. Goldwire says, the more you read, the better you read. So read, read, read. Back to the studio. Next up, Gianna Canhoy and Ramin Maharin with Kylie's book feature. Do you want to be a published author when you grow up? Here at Carver Middle School, one of our own Eagles is now a published author. Although 6th grade Kylie Jeter is young, this is an amazing accomplishment for a person of any age. Her book is called Aquino's Life, A Time with Magic. She has already gathered some attention and you can find her book on kidsrightstories.net. Her book is set to release on October 18th and Carver's Media Center will have copies for students to check out. Carver will also be doing a raffle to give away over 30 copies of Kylie's book. Winners will be given the opportunity to attend Kylie's book signing and meet the author. For more information on the topic, stay tuned. We interviewed Kylie for more on the topic. I am here with Kylie Jeter, the author of the brand new book, Akamita's Life, A Time with Magic. Can you please tell us a little bit about your book? It's about this boy who just started this new school, just started a new life, and there's this big secret he holds. 
to read the you'll have to read the book to find out the big secret but it's it's crazy what advice do you have for other writers as long as you can remain calm and don't get stressed out and it's not like a bad thing that you will get angry about have fun and enjoy it hmm. um who or what inspired you to write the book I read a lot, of, a lot of Harry Potter books, so it's kind of based off of that, but not too much. I like it a lot. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, enjoy it, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> For CMS TV, mm -hmm. I'm Ariana Wagner. Back to the studio! As you can see, Kylie is an amazing student and author. If you want to support her by purchasing a book, feel free to stop by the Media Center. And for more information on the book signing, stay tuned. For CMS TV, I'm Gianna Canhoy. And I'm Evie Murphy. I don't want to become a writer, but I'm sure if you have an adventurous mind, you can become a writer and even publish your book too. Here is Kevin Valdez's health update. Your nurse consent paper regarding COVID and monkeypox. Students are no longer required to wear masks and get COVID. However, CBS News states that monkeypox was declared a public health emergency of international, international concern by the World Health Organization on June 23rd. Unlike COVID, monkeypox doesn't have a vaccine, unfortunately, and is very contagious. I interviewed Carver's very own nurse for more on the topic. What are the new procedures to visit the list? So the new procedures this year are based on a new law that was passed on July 1st called the Parent Bill of Rights. And with this, um, your parent has to sign a consent form in order for you to do any kind of screenings at the school or to see the school nurse. So the form has to be signed and returned to the school and it entered into the system. Um, so when you want to see the nurse, if you're falling ill or something happened, you have to get permission from your teacher, of course. From there, you go to the grade level office. They will look up to see if you're in the system, or you can go to the front office, and they'll look you up, and then they'll write on your pass if it's okay to come Maybe see us. Can you please give some COVID updates? Okay, as far as COVID goes, um, it's still it's still around. It didn't go anywhere, um, unfortunately. So we can get, um, as far as COVID precautions go, Everybody knows to stay home when you're sick. If you're not feeling well, we suggest that. Wash your hands and follow the CDC guidelines. So we're still seeing kids with, you know, that are feeling sick to come into school. If you're feeling sick, stay home. About the current monkeypox situation. Well, as far as monkeypox goes, um, I haven't seen anything like that so far. Um, I don't know much about it, but there's always good to always know your body and what's wrong, you know, always notice things that change in your body. If you notice any kind of change, something developing on your body, you should always contact an adult. Like Con yeah, we're starting off on a good school year. I hope everybody has a safe and ha um, happy and healthy school year. And um, just continue uh, being successful in all that you do. And As you can see, we are getting things back to normal, but we still need to take precautions to keep everyone safe. For CMS TV, I'm Kevin Valadez. My parents have turned in my consent form. In case I get sick, Eagles, make sure to turn in your consent form just in case of an emergency. Back to the studio. Did you know Indonesia is home to some of the shortest people in the world? Did you also know that according to Healthline.com, it states that short people live longer? Well, this works for me. On October 17, Judge Rowe and Judge Kuntz came to our school. They came to explain the judicial branch from a real perspective to our eagles. This session was extremely informative as the students learned tons of tips and tricks they will use at our mock trial. This year, Carver's mock trial is scheduled for May 2023. Next up, a couple of our reporters with the word of the week. Do you know the word of the week? Carver Middle School students build their vocabulary knowledge through all the classes through the Word of the Week. Let's go around and see those of the week. In which of these sentences do you think that the word competent is being used for? I feel like it's the first one because he's really doing his job. Okay. Which sentence do you think Word of the Week is being correctly used? Me personally, I would say the first one because competent 
The word competent means that you're successful. So in the, in the, the sentence, it says he's competent in babysitting after young children, meaning that he's comp competent in looking after young children. He's showing his parents that he's responsible. Also, he's breaking bank. He's making money off of it. So we're going to use the word of week correctly. The first one because he's doing his job. In which of these sentences do you think the word effectively is being used correctly? Because F Y Because The word effectively means that you succeed and she succeeded with cleaning. What should he say do you think the word adequate blue is correct? I think the correct one is A. Why? Because um, it's using the word correctly as in the other one is not. Attention Eagles. We are looking for a few more members to join the yearbook club. Help commemorate the school by taking pictures and creating a yearbook to remember. See Ms. Goldwire in the Media Center for more information. Coming next, Kevin Valadez and Ramin Maharin's feature with Reading Plus and Reading Counts. Attention Eagles, are you interested in winning some prizes? You have a chance by simply participating in your ELA class. Yep, that's right. To win some prizes, all you have to do is complete your weekly Reading Plus requirements. To win additional prizes, you can do Reading Counts. Let us know what type of prizes you would like by scanning the barcode around school. Let us show you how you can log on to Reading Plus and Reading Counts. For Reading Plus, first of course, you log in to your student portal. After that, you go to the search bar and, and search for Reading Plus. You click the triangle thing, and then of course you wait for it to load, which sometimes can take a while. And then you click start lessons, and there you go. Remember, for each week, you need four C readers and three vocabulary. To get to Scholastic HMH, you have to log into your district portal. Once you do that, you'll be granted with the application. After that, you can press the application. You'll be granted with two options. Press the Reading Counts option. Once you do that, you'll be granted with an option to choose a reading interest. Once you do that, you can press any category of your select interest. Once you press that, it'll suggest you books with that category specifically. Once you do that, you can take the quiz afterwards. For CMS TV, I'm Amin Mahareen. And I'm Kevin Baladez. I sure want some prizes, so I'll be sure to do my Reading Plus and Reading Counts. Me too. Next up, Gianna Canhoy for Hispanic Heritage Month. Hola, what do you know about Hispanic Heritage Month? Did you know, according to recent U.S. Census Bureau surveys, that the Hispanic population of the U.S. as of July 1st, 2019 was 60.6 .6 million, making people of Hispanic origin the nation's largest ethnic or racial minority? According to the survey, Hispanics constituted 18.5% of the nation's population. Now you know. Happy National Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month is a national celebration that is observed all over the United States. It helps recognize and celebrate the many contributions, diverse cultures, and extensive histories of the American Latino community. 
Hispanic Heritage Month started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period starting on September 15th and ending on October 15th every year. This year, Carver Middle School recognized and celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month on October 13th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. During this celebration, our Carver Band, drill team, and chorus performed. We even had a churro truck for some concessions. Thanks to all the people who participated. For CMS TV, I'm Gianna Canhoy. Hasta luego! For those of you that did not attend Carver's Fall Dance, you definitely missed out. There's DJs, snacks, a pizza booth, and tons of fun with the students and staff in your area. I just want you to attend our next school line. Be sure to get to class on time, maintain all threes and fours, in conduct, and refrain from getting suspended or going to ISS. Here's a quick recap of the time we had. Yearbook Picture Day will be on November 2nd, 2022. You are required to wear a uniform, but be sure to dress your best. That's it for this edition of CMS TV News. Eagles, have a wonderful day and continue to fly above all.